No economy has ever printed $6.72 trillion in 30 months. That's basically turning on the printing presses, printing money, giving it away for free, dreaming up other reasons to give more money away for free, such as student loan forgiveness. And then the Anti-Inflation Act, that's just hilarious to call it that. Uh, it's very inflationary. And so at some point, we'll have to stop printing money, but it hasn't happened yet. All-time record deficit. Um, consumers flush with cash, and these earnings are proving it out this week. If we're going to get a slowdown in earnings, it's probably going to be in Q1 or 2 next year because it doesn't look like it's going to make it this quarter. And uh, as a result, we've got a really perplexing, difficult time for investors. Well, the inflation fears come from the CPI number, uh, which was over 8%, and that is inflationary. However, there's a new narrative going on in the market with investors regarding how the CPI is constructed. 40% is in shelter, and shelter stats are notoriously long dated. In other words, the numbers you're seeing now reflect the shelter market, the housing market, the apartment rental market 18 months ago when it was smoking hot. That is not the case in major cities now. Rent increases have slowed down, housing prices have softened as mortgages have increased, and yet it's not reflected yet. So it's a little bit of saying I want to change the data set now because I don't believe it anymore. That's kind of one narrative. But even though it's sitting at over 8%, the market is willing to fribulate, waiting for more earnings um, validation that we actually have a slowdown. It's simply not there yet. And so if the Fed keeps using this 8% number and keeps ratcheting rates, they will overshoot. Well, I'm doing what a lot of other traders are doing. I'm going into the November time period with over 34 different positions on, many of them underwater. So naturally what I'm going to do now that the IRS and other regulators around the world are now looking at crypto in terms of tax compensation, very much like a security, I'm going to have to trade. So I'm going to be doing trading taking some of the projects that have been decimated down 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent, selling those and basically buying what I consider the granddaddy index of all crypto, Bitcoin. So I can go through the tax season owning more Bitcoin, I will, maybe a little bit more Ethereum, but basically the large market cap names are the ones that matter. So if you're going to do a basket of names to hold through the back end of the year, I would say it's going to be Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Solana, um, you know, those are, are huge market cap names uh, and, and, I, and I think are going to index together. I don't think any one of those breaks out of the pack. They all kind of trade in tandem. So if you're only going to own one, it's probably going to be Bitcoin. But all the rest trade in tandem with Bitcoin anyways. Recessions start traditionally with a rise in unemployment. Haven't seen that yet either. If you're in the food services industries on either coast, where in California, for example, the minimum wage is $15. You can't even hire people for $23 an hour now. They don't even want to work. So that, that cash that's flushing around the system is still having an effect there. It's not clear how the, you know, the poo-poo hits the fan on this one yet, but the market has made a decision. The corrections in the S&P 500 have been brutal and fast in every single sector. And so the market, generally speaking, is never wrong forever. And what it anticipates is a sharp decline in earnings. Because right now, the PE, if we believe the earnings for next year, is sitting between 14.5 and 15%. Well, that's getting close to a bottom. I mean, you could argue the bottom would be 12x, which is really, really low earnings for the S&P. But here we are at 15. I mean, I'd argue it's time to start nibbling. You can't guess the bottom, but my goodness, just on a strong index basis, you could go into this market saying to yourself, regardless what the correction is, two-thirds of it's baked in. The good news on that is all new bills, all new initiatives that are not bipartisan bills, in other words, ram a down your throat bills like the student debt thing, uh, ram a bill like uh, anti-inflation bill. I mean, nobody wanted to vote for that on the other side of the aisle. So those kinds of bills are dead for the rest of this presidency. They'll be total, total gridlock. And that is a good thing. Uh, the markets love gridlock. Markets like a pause that refreshes. We need a pause. The printing presses have gone insane, and that's why we have inflation in the first place. I mean, for all the talk about inflation, you print $6.72 trillion in 30 months. What, what the hell did you think was going to happen? Of course there's going to be inflation. And, and to add to that, add fuel to the inflation fire, let's talk about oil and the rocky Saudi-U.S. Uh, relationship. Uh, your take on that, uh, Kevin, it seems that you know Saudi-U.S. 
factor here has hit rock bottom. Yep, uh, you're right. That's a uh, difficult challenge for Biden. I don't think anybody's going to give him A plus for foreign affairs at this point. Been a lot of mixed signals. We started with the Green Initiative in the U.S. Uh, we gave up our oil independence that blew up in everybody's face in the form of high gasoline prices. Now he's talking to uh, dictators in Venezuela, flying over to see the Saudis, asking them not to stop production. They don't care. It's obvious. Um, that's not great. But at the same time, it does make us do a little soul searching in the U.S. about getting back to energy and independence. And there's a lot of pressure on that given what's going on in Germany. So all of this ends up being a market consideration. Right now, oil is being capped in price by those bears that are concerned about a global recession and use of, of energy. But not every country is buoyant with the consumer as the U.S. is because the U.S. dollars cause lots of headaches in other currencies. You know, when you look at the value of currencies in, in other nations against the U.S., it's getting very, very tough for them. And so there's a lot of cross currents here, but right now people are focused on the Fed, they're focused on the midterms, and all of this is going to play out in the next five weeks. So stay tuned, it's going to get really interesting. That happens all the time. Now what's, what's holding this one back is they're not sure they'd win a general election given all the you know, snafus they've had, but I, I, I love Downing Street. I love the chaos in parliamentary systems. I really enjoy it. And it's, the, the outcome's unknown, but obviously but she backpedaled and um, it, it has brought a little stability to the credit markets in the UK, but this is the kind of thing, people think uh, politicians are infallible, they're not. They make lots of mistakes and there's a good example of how that happened. I mean, there was a huge change in the direction of capital going into crypto in the last six months. So what's changed now is most of the investors that are willing to take the highly speculative investments, and some of them are large, a new deal called Mistin, M-I-S-T-E-N, just got funded. Evan Chung was the name of the fellow who left Facebook. He was doing their digital currency. He took the whole team, set up a new company, raised 300 million in 45 minutes, basically without a deck. FTX was the lead investor at 100 million. I put money into that deal. Um, he is promising a new blockchain to service financial transactions at 10 times the speed of anything else out there. And we do need that, so there's a lot of interest. But there's an example of a have company that really has no revenue, it's just starting its, its journey with now 300 million. It was almost 6x oversubscribed. The rest of the crypto market that came out of the DeFi space has been obliterated. And financings there are being done in cram down rounds, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80% less than the last round very very difficult if the company's not profitable there's not a lot of investor appetite for it so you have the haves and the have-nots in addition to that the whole web3 movement which was what that whole conference was about is more towards mass adoption everybody that's investing money into that is trying to solve for the wallet number one number two security and number three regulation those are the three horsemen of the new web3 movement mass adoption through regulation through security and a much easier to use wallet. The best analogy I can give you, until your grandmother can figure out how to buy Bitcoin on her, on her cell phone.